Next on the docket in our inventory of gas laws is something known as Dalton's Law, which is actually quite simple and is nevertheless the source of a lot of problems for first year students. So let me try and explain simply what we're looking at here. Let me just create a container for a gas. Just any old container, any size, any shape, doesn't matter. And for simplicity, let's say this particular container has a volume of 22.4 liters. Let's go further and say that it's at a temperature of standard temperature, 273 kelvins. And then let's go ahead and say what the pressure of some gas we're going to put in the container is. Let's just use standard pressure, one atmosphere. Now, of course, we've already learned that this volume is molar volume at STP, and this is STP, standard temperature and pressure. So the amount of gas in this volume that would give me this temperature and this pressure would be one mole. So we have one mole of some gas in here, and you can pick any gas you want. Let's pick oxygen. So I'm going to do some review of kinetic theory. I should picture in my mind's eye that inside this little box, there are a bunch of tiny particles of oxygen molecules whizzing around, slamming into each other, slamming into the container wall, exerting a pressure of one atmosphere at this particular temperature. Of course, if we increase the volume they had to play in, the pressure would drop. Or if we increased how fast they're moving, the pressure would go up. But we do know their attractions are negligible, and the actual amount of physical space in here taken up by the particles is very small. Gases aren't very dense. Now that's all review, but where does Graham's Law come in? Well, let me grab a different color. Let's pick another gas. Let's say pick hydrogen. And let's pick the same amount, one mole. And let's throw our mole of hydrogen into the same container as our mole of oxygen. So we throw them in the same container. Well, an obvious thing that happens is this gas would now have to have the same volume as the other gas already in there. After all, they're in the same container, they would have to have the same volume. Likewise, since they're mixed together, the kinetic energy of the two would have to be the same. They'd have to have the same temperature. You throw a thermometer up into the air around you, you're not reading the temperature or kinetic energy of just the nitrogen, you're reading the temperature and kinetic energy of all the molecules that make up the air. The nitrogen, the oxygen, the carbon dioxide, trace amounts of helium, water vapor, etc. But the point is this. If you have the same number of moles, one, one, occupying the same volume and the same temperature of two different gases, the hydrogen would have to have the same pressure, one atmosphere. Now, here's the Dalton's Law part throwing hydrogen in with the oxygen doesn't change the pressure of the oxygen. The only thing that would change the pressure of the oxygen would be if we change the amount of oxygen, the volume of the container, or the temperature of the oxygen. And we did none of those things when we added the hydrogen. Therefore, the oxygen is still in here exerting one atmosphere of pressure against the container walls. But, since we have added hydrogen, there is another gas in here also hitting the container walls. So now, instead of one guy pushing on the wall, we got two guys pushing on the wall. We're going to get more push. We're going to get more pressure. And it's a simple summative law. The total pressure of a gas mixture, P total, is simply the sum of the individual gas pressures. In other words, the pressure exerted by the hydrogen isn't affected by the presence of oxygen, just as the oxygen's pressure was not affected by the addition of hydrogen. But the two pressures combined have a cumulative effect on the container walls that's twice as great. In other words, P total in this simple example would be one atmosphere for the oxygen plus one atmosphere for the hydrogen for a total of two atmospheres. So yes, total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures. and We call them partial pressures 
because each gas contributes part of the pressure to the whole. And you'll recognize Dalton's Law questions immediately when you see them because they will start by describing a mixture of gases. And any time you end up with a mixture in here, you're going to have to think Dalton's Law. Now, this is one way to think of Dalton's Law, but there's another way to think of it, too. And it's really one of your original simple gas laws. Namely, we already know that pressure is directly related to moles. We know that because pressure is force per area, and force is a function of temperature in moles, and surface area is a function of volume. So because of this relationship right here, I know pressure and moles are directly related. Now, the container wall doesn't care whether it gets hit by an oxygen molecule or a hydrogen molecule. It will feel a push from either one. And therefore, the combined pressure of both is directly related to the total number of moles. And it doesn't matter whether they're moles of oxygen or moles of hydrogen, it's the total number of moles. So, to sum what we've learned thus far, and then we'll do an example, and I'll make an entirely different screencast with multiple other examples you can watch too, because there are lots of different ways we can word these problems. But they'll all begin with some sort of description of a mixture of gases. You see anything about a mixture of gases all in the same container, think Dalton's Law. And immediately, I recommend immediately, that you write down both ways to think about Dalton's Law. Namely, the total pressure is the sum of all the partial pressures, or the simple relationship that total pressure is directly related to total moles, no matter which gas you're looking at. Write these both down, have them both in front of you whenever you see a gas mixture. And one of them will usually work faster than the other in a given problem, but they both will work. And I'll demonstrate that with a problem that I could think either way and get the problem answered the same way. So here's an example of a typical Dalton's Law problem. We have two moles of oxygen gas, which I will write down. And remember, the key to success in Dalton's Law is keeping your gases straight. Are you talking about one gas, oxygen, the other gas, hydrogen, or all the gases, namely the total? And be sure to label very carefully molar amounts of the gases and which pressure is which. So we have two moles of oxygen in this container, and we have two grams of hydrogen in this container. And they're sealed in the same container, so they both have the same volume, 20 liters, and they both have the same temperature, 323 kelvins. So now, I am sort of forcing you to do this problem in a specific way. Namely, I'm kind of forcing you to focus on this version of Dalton's Law. And I'm doing that by asking you what the partial pressure of each of these two gases is. Well, I like to start with the answer. And I have moles, and I have volume, and I have temperature. So to get the pressure for oxygen is simple, I use the ideal gas law. There's a 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres of oxygen for every mole of oxygen Kelvin. And there essentially is my partial pressure of oxygen. However, I need to cancel volume. That's why I know it's a 20 liter container. I need to cancel temperature, 323 kelvins. And I need to cancel moles of oxygen. And we have two moles. Everything cancels except for the pressure of the oxygen. Quick calculation tells me that we have 2.65 atmospheres of pressure due solely to the oxygen. However, there's another gas in the container, and it's this 2 grams of hydrogen. But again, I know the amount, and I know the volume, and I know the temperature. So a second application of the ideal gas law will let me get the pressure of hydrogen. I'm going to use a space down here, even though we're still doing part A. We have 0 0.0821 liter 
atmospheres of hydrogen pressure for each mole of hydrogen Kelvin. And with the same 323 Kelvins, temperature cancels, and the same 20 liter container, volume cancels. But in this case, I gave you a mass of hydrogen, so we have to use a quick molar mass conversion. One mole of H2 is 2.0 grams of H2. And then I can cancel the mass of hydrogen with the mass given. So I just happen to give you a mole of hydrogen. Grab my calculator, and we have 1.33 atmospheres of hydrogen gas. So I've answered part A, namely, what is the partial pressure of each gas? Easily found from the ideal gas law, if I use the moles of each gas, I'll get the pressure of each gas. And the second part of the problem, the part that's Dalton's law, is extremely simplistic because, of course, Dalton's law tells us that the total pressure in this container is merely a sum of the two partial pressures. And since we know those two partial pressures, we can easily calculate that there are 3.98 atmospheres of pressure in this container. Now, I wanted to prove to you that you can do all of these problems one of two ways, and we just use the strict definition way. P1 plus P2, partial pressures when added together equal the total. But I should be able to do it this way as well, namely, use the total number of moles of gas to calculate the total pressure. So let's try it that way just to be sure we get the same thing. And if you'll remember in this problem, we started with two moles of oxygen and we started with essentially one mole of hydrogen because the molar mass of hydrogen is two grams per mole. If we have two grams, we have one mole. So if I'm going to think the other way about Dalton's law in terms of total moles and total pressures, I have a total number of moles of gas of 2 plus 1, otherwise known as 3 moles of gas total. And then one application of the ideal gas law, I'll know the total pressure. Because there are 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres total pressure for every mole total of gas, Kelvin. And so I can get the total pressure directly because, yes, the volume in either case is 20 liters. The temperature is 323 kelvins, canceling those two quantities. And the total moles was 3.00 moles. And when you multiply all this out, you get the exact same answer. So yes, I can apply both forms of Dalton's law in order to obtain my answer. Namely, the sum of each individual gas's pressure gives you total pressure, or the container doesn't care about what's hitting it, just how much is hitting it. So total moles of any kind of gas are directly related to total pressure by our gas law constant. Now in the successive video that I'm going to do, I'm just going to do further applications of this same gas law.